Hello, I'm Atuba George. I was talking to you yesterday about uh, what's going on in, in, in the world today and how we as God's children should mind what we say and mind what we do even at times like this. See, and I was talking to you yesterday about the burden of a prophet. If you understand what the prophetic ministry is and the burden that comes with it, you will never be in a rush to, to say, I, I, I prophesied something. You prophesied something that is bad and it's happening. It's not a joy. It's not a joy. I remember years ago, I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, anything that you have made up your mind to do, please don't tell me beforehand. See, because I'm not going to leave with the fact that you showed me something that is not good and then I see it come to pass on the earth. Now I've seen several, I've, I think twice now, the Lord has shown me visions of plane crash. And I stood in the gap and prayed against that. I didn't even say it publicly. I, I said, Lord, this thing is not going to happen. And thank God, I've not seen it happen yet. See, so I told the Lord, Lord, my, my covenant with you is this. If I see it and it's not good, then it's not your mind that that thing should come to pass. So we'll stand together and we stop it. The purpose is to save lives, not to sound like a prophet or not to, not to be one tamed prophet of God. You understand what I'm saying? So when, when the vision is bad and it concerns the people, it concerns somebody, it concerns people that will lose their lives, the burden comes on you to stop it. The burden is on you to save it. You must do everything you know how to do to stop that thing. Except, whereas the, except where the people decided, yes, this is where we have chosen to go. Do you know why God is doing this thing? See, people don't understand the heart of God. He is a God of mercy. See, on the judgment day, when the whole world is going to, judge, going to be judged by God, when they stand before God to be judged, I will tell you this. The first person that is going to be judged is God himself. He's going to judge himself first. Say, so you mean how, how God judge himself? Yes. He will judge himself by showing you everything he did. Even the wicked, whose names are not in the book of life. God is going to judge himself. Why? Because he is going to be the righteous judge. And if he's going to be the righteous judge, then there has to be no iniquity in him, even in his plans. Now, that's why God is saying, even when I say to the wicked, now the wicked is supposed to die. You understand what I'm saying? But God is saying, even when I say to the wicked, you will surely die. You must go warn that wicked and your intention to warn that wicked is to save his life. So do everything possible to save his life. Now, this was the reason God sent Jonah to Nineveh. You understand what I'm talking about? And you know Jonah refused to say, Lord, see, I leave this matter. If you want to save those people, save them. Because at the end of the day, I'll be the one that'll be like the false prophets. I'll go tell these people that they will die after three days. And three days will pass. They will just repent. You'll forgive them. Nobody dies. I'm the one that will look, that will look bad. But you see, Jonah didn't understand that God's intention is to save the people's lives. The Bible says it is not his will that any man should perish. So now when God sends you to the wicked and the wicked hears your warning, understands your warning. You, you don't say it codedly to him. You say it plainly. This is what the Lord is saying. You need to change from this thing. If not, you will die. And, and, and the wicked hears that and still goes ahead and, and, and continues what he's doing. And he dies. Now you are free from his blood. You know why? On the day of judgment, God is going to show that wicked man. You this wicked man. I did everything to save you. Ah, but, 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 God said, I sent my servants to you. Can you remember? And he remembers all the thoughts of his heart the day you came to him. And he, oh, Lord, I give up. You're righteous. Now, that's how the judgment day is going to be like. God is going to judge himself first. He's going to show, you know, you know, you know, people don't understand this. God is not going to be showing you your bad record. He's not going to be showing you uh, all the evil things. You know, people think on the judgment that God's going to play a video and your whole life is going to be played before him. You see where you're going to steal your, your first stealing. God's okay, angel, show him his first stealing. And then the angel show you when you're six years old, you're going to steal from meat from the pot. You think that's what God's going to do? No way. <laughs> no way. See, 
heaven already has his records. Record of what? God's plans for your life. So, so God's just going to show you his plan for your life. And then when you are looking at those plans, you will see every effort God made to get you into his plan. And it is you that will remember your own iniquity and how you dodged God's plan. You are the one. You will see because you will see when God said when you, when you turned 18, you were supposed to be somewhere. You were supposed to go to a certain school. You will remember that the offer was given to you on a platter. And you will remember the thoughts that were in your heart when you rejected that offer. See? Thereby seeing the righteousness of God also. And then seeing your own foolishness and iniquity. So it's not God that is going to show you your iniquity. It is you that will remember your iniquity yourself. And then you, God, that is it. Why? Because he is righteous. Praise God. So, don't, don't bother about who did God tell anybody. You know, what we should be bothered about, see, right now, it's not whether God told anybody about coronavirus or not. No, what we should be bothered about is what did God tell his children, even in this season? And even now, what is God saying? Now, Jesus said to those, those Jewish men, he says, you err because you don't know the scriptures, not the power of God. Number one, don't ever think coronavirus just came like that and God didn't know. <laughs> if you think like that, sorry, you're not thinking right. Two, don't ever think coronavirus is the devil outrunning God's children or outrunning God's plan. <laughs> uh, let me tell you this truth. In every of God's plan, Satan has a role to play in it. You I've got to stop here. Praise <laughs> God. I'm just going to continue from here tomorrow. I've got lots of things to share with you. And I pray the Spirit of God will help us. But listen, don't be afraid in this season. I'm sharing with you the thoughts of God. And I'm sure by the time I'm done with you this week, you will be comforted. You will understand what's going on. And you will be blessed. God bless you. Bye-bye.